Hello Internet! So this is probably one of the most boring videos that you're going to be seeing today, at, at least I hope. So try and have better taste next time. But um, there is some voting coming up in New York, and I just thought I'd make a video talking about how I intend uh, to vote. This is happening tomorrow, and it's covering uh, some, uh, I think it's New York State stuff mostly. Um, and so first I would just note that I resent when there's no competition in an election, even more so when there's multiple slots. Often in New York you end up having maybe like three slots for judges open up, and unfortunately usually that means there's three candidates, uh, all of them Democratic, or I mean of the Democratic Party. And as somebody who tends to vote uh, with Democrats, but, is, uh, but who is not one, it's not that I'm bothered by the value non-alignment here, although sometimes I am because Democrats uh, being representing the left very broadly in the United States, uh, they represent a variety of different positions and I would like to have some ability to, to steer between the positions that I like and the positions that I don't like. Um, I'm a liberal, I'm not a progressive. I tend to vote against progressives and to fund campaigns against progressives, um, particularly cultural progressives. Um, and so it's, it's, just, it's really, really irritating to me not to see any competition for an elected office. And so the way that I signal my displeasure is that I just don't vote in that part of the ballot. Uh, because I, I like I would like for people looking at the results to see, oh, way fewer people voted in this. Um, just to recognize that there's some frustration there. It doesn't mean that if there were more uh, candidates uh, running from other parties or even the same party that I would be necessarily voting for other parties, but I would certainly feel better voting. Uh, I just think it just feels very fake when you, when you show up to vote but there's no real choice whatsoever, like not even token choice between candidate A and candidate B. I want to have some choice. And it really is healthier for our democracy if we have a lot of choice. Why are the Republicans not running people in these uh, positions? I mean, th there is a danger that, you know, the Republican Party currently, at least nationally, is embraced some really crazy shit. Um, but they should be able to find it, see, at least some local conservative people who aren't crazy to, to run for office, but they haven't. Uh, anyhow, let's, let's get into it and run down the things that I know are on the ballot. First thing is the position of Justice of the Supreme Court, First District. Oh, I, I should note that I'm, I'm in the neighborhood of Chelsea in Manhattan in New York City. So that might help you figure out like where I am and what the local things are, but I'll, I'll, I'll be going over it. So there's the pos position of Justice of the Supreme Court, First District. And here, there's three slots, there's three candidates, so I'm not going to vote, and I'm grumpy about it. Second, there's the position of Judge of the Civil Court for New York County. Two slots, two candidates, I don't intend to vote for this. Next, there's member of the city council, third council district. Candidates are Eric Botcher from the Democratic Party and Robert Bobrick from the Republican Party, although he also is co-registered with another bizarre uh, anti-vax party. And so it's enough for me to see that Bobrick opposes sensible health policies that he will not get my vote. I dislike Botcher. He's pushed for drag story hour events and a number of other fringe causes. He's one of those progressives that I really try to uh, fund campaigns that are running against people like that. I want liberals. I don't want progressives. I'm not into the bizarre social, social change that progressives want. I may be open to like a much more generous welfare state, but I don't, I don't think the societal changes that progressives want are good. Uh, and, and because he's pushed for drag story hour events, that is a red line for me. Can't in good conscience vote for him either. Both candidates have stepped on my red lines, and so I don't intend to vote for this. If I do see another party 
on the ballot before tomorrow, um, then I might look into their background, see what positions they've taken, and consider voting for them. But for now, both of those candidates have disqualified them, uh, themselves from my vote, and uh, yeah, I'm really not at all happy about that. Next, there's Judge of the Civil Court, 3rd Municipal Court District. One slot, one candidate, so I don't intend to vote for this. Those are all the positions that I get to go uh, get to vote for tomorrow, uh, which might make you think, why am I going to bother showing up? Well, firstly, I think it's important just to add to the numbers of people who voted, even if the votes uh, don't go anywhere particular. But secondly, there's two ballot proposals. So I had to do a little bit of research on these because I didn't really know a lot about uh, either of them, and I wanted to learn enough at least uh, to judge the policy uh, changes that they wanted to make. The first ballot proposal is to remove uh, small school districts from a special debt limitation. So I had to do research on this and what it means is right now school districts in cities or towns or counties that have less than 125,000 people, if I remember correctly, they have a special debt limitation where they're, uh, they, they face a lot more restrictions on debt that they can take on as uh, school, uh, school districts. Um, so I'm wor I was working through this as I was writing it and uh, basically debt limits generally seem sensible to me to push uh, as a policy push to push parts of the state to raise taxes when they need to pay for things rather than to create debt and pay interest on it forever. Although I don't want the limits to instead starve spending. And that's always the danger when you create policy like this. It's good for one thing, it's uh, bad for another because it can be leaned on from either direction. Um, next, uh, I also note that some kinds of school spending could be wasteful, like DEI initiatives, which are always a waste of money. Uh, next, it's initially it's uh, unclear why small school districts should be treated differently. Although presumably smaller cities, towns, etc. are more vulnerable to economic abandonment than bigger ones, so there's more leverage for any corporations that are located in them. There's the risk of the debt turning into a permanent shackle on an area, and uh, that's not good. You have to, I don't know if you can disincorporate and declare bankruptcy or something like that, but that's way less of a problem in, in big places because they have a lot of employees. Companies have a lot less of an incentive to flee an area and its taxes when they need to be there to, um, to hire people. I mean, don't need to be there, but there's utility in them being there. So I think as a whole, I tentatively approve of debt limits, assuming, as, again, assuming that they don't turn into a two-pronged strategy, the other being the refusal to raise taxes in order for bizarre people to try and starve government. As such, maybe it's better to extend that limit, uh, limitation more broadly, or to expand it more broadly, rather than remove it. Although again, the, the difference between big and small may be justified. Policy is messy. I could see myself easily reaching a different conclusion on this, but I intend to vote no, because I think it's probably better policy to have this special debt limitation, even though I'd like to extend it outwards, maybe to everywhere. Next is a, the second ballot proposal, which is extending an existing exemption of sewage projects from debt limits in the state of New York for another 10 years. So apparently there's a temporary leniency on debt limits for sewage projects. And um, it's been going on for a certain period of time. They're just kicking the can down the road in terms of when they're gonna let this run out. And in general, I dislike laws that need to be renewed frequently like this, uh, unless they're responding to a similarly time-limited event. Meaning like if there's a huge hurricane, you need to have some temporary policy, then sure. Why not? If there's some natural disaster, just something where there really was some kind of a event that justifies a time-limited time policy, then great, do it that way. Otherwise, you risk things like these being a political football 
where uh, it turns into the, hey, it's time for horse trading. What bits of your policy will you give up in order to keep this thing around that we know that you need? Uh, it's a, an opportunity for uh, counties typically to be bled by weird interest groups that need just a little bit more support. And usually it is hardline fiscal conservatives that are doing this, but not always. But in general, it's just, it's bad policy. Uh, to, it's um, it's bad. It's not that this particular policy is bad, but it is bad to do policy this way. If uh, if it's good policy to exempt sewage projects from debt limits, then that should be permanent. If it's not good policy to exempt sewage projects from debt limits, then it just shouldn't be in place at all. It shouldn't have been uh, a shouldn't have a 10-year uh, sunset period that needs to be canceled every time or whatever it was last time. So I just, I don't want to prolong this way of doing policy. And it's not bec uh, because uh, I know very much about sewage policy. It's not that I think that uh, it's, that debt and sewage really need to be, um, that that they really either do or don't need this distance, but just I don't, want to have policies in general that are structured as a we need to renew this on a regular basis. So I'm going to vote no on this. Uh, again, if they think it's good policy, make it permanent. Don't make it something that needs to be renewed regularly. So basically, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show up tomorrow and vote no on two ballot proposals, and I won't vote for any of the positions because uh, Either there's no choice, or both candidates are, in my view, not appropriate for the role. Anyhow, um, go, go watch something more interesting. Bye-bye.